Hello, this is Bishop, and this is a test of autopilot. 8.1, 2018, 32, 3817FDD. This is the second test that I've been doing of this particular autopilot version, but this time we're going to try it on a harder section of road than we normally do as part of our loop. So I'm going to slow down for this part because we're going through a very narrow underpass, and even when I'm driving, this, this always makes me a little bit nervous, and I may take over because I don't want it to... It makes me a little nervous. Okay, so I took over right there. Um, the car was doing fine. I've actually let it go through that section before without any issue. I just like to give a little bit of a wide berth to the complete lack of shoulder that you have on the right-hand side because I don't want to potentially lose a mirror. I can't imagine that those are particularly cheap to replace. So, I've re-engaged autopilot. And we're just going to, first of all, if we're coming up on this stopped car, we get to see how the stopped car detection is working. Looks like the light has turned green, so we're not going to get to see that in this particular instance. But we do have some very curvy sections of road that are coming up, so we'll get to see how Autopilot acquits itself on those. Uh, one difference that we have in this particular session is one thing I noticed. So in the in the last video that I did, I had changed up some of the recording hardware. Well, I'm still using the Blackview DR900S two-channel dash cam for the front and the rear view. Um, I recently got my hands on a GoPro Hero 6, which I'm using for the instrument cluster display, which actually provides a much wider and higher quality, oh, very nice, uh, much higher or wider and higher quality display of what the instrument cluster looks like than my old Canon Digital Elf, which I had purchased just as a cheap camera specifically for that purpose. It's also a little bit easier to mount because I just put a, um, a GoPro mount clip and I'll, I'll post a link to the photos of that in the description for this video. Um, so one thing though is in my previous videos I was actually using the Canon Digital Elf as the audio recording source for my voice because the the, the dash cam's not great. I mean, it's got it does have audio recording, but it doesn't do a particularly excellent job of it. All right, let's see how it does here. You can see that car. Slow down. Stop. 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 Stopped a little late, but it did stop. So I didn't have to take over on that turn at all. That's one of the things that I'm always interested in seeing the car do. It's one thing to be able to detect a car that is stopped that is directly in front of you. It's another thing to be able to detect a car that is around a curve. And that's one thing that I'm always a little bit wary of with the autopilot is making sure that it's not going to plow into the back of a car because the corner is, you know, maybe it's... Hello, wake up, bye. Light's green, come on. <laughs> been green for a while. Alright. Uh, as I was saying, oh, okay, so the car had me take over there because it started to lose the lane line across the intersection. So I took over and I'll put it back on. So yes, if the corner is slightly blind or maybe not blind to a human driver, but sufficiently obscured that a, the autopilot has a difficult time differentiating whether or not the car that's in front of you is actually in your lane, that's something I'm always a little bit wary of. Now, going back to what I was saying about the audio recording, <laughs> before I got segued. Um, the, so I'm going to have to take over here because it, the car will obviously will not stop at the stop sign once it's our turn. Uh, the Canon Digital Elf is what I was using for the audio recording because the, um, the dash cam was not particularly great quality. Um, after switching out for the GoPro, I was a little bit disappointed to find out that the GoPro's audio recording is actually not quite as good as the Canon Digital Elf. You know, it's not exactly what it's intended for, so, you know, no harm, no foul. I'm not, like, dissing on the GoPro. The GoPro is actually a great camera, and I'm going to continue to use it. Um, but, in order to get better quality on the, on the audio recording, I've actually gone ahead and gotten a headset for my phone, so I'm actually using a, a single earpiece so I can still hear out the other ear because I am actually driving a car, um, headset that I'm wearing right now, and I'm doing the audio recording as a separate track on my phone. And having done a little bit of preliminary testing, obviously we'll see how have to see how this particular video comes out. Uh, the overall audio quality, actually, with this little cheapo $15 headset that I bought off of Amazon, is actually great and uh, much better quality than any of the other previous solutions that I had used for any of my other videos. So we'll see how that goes. All right, coming around a curve to cars, and yes, does see the cars. That's nice. Now I'll go ahead and make a right turn, because this is actually in the ballpark of where I'm going. So I have to take over from autopilot, turn off the tack. Hopefully there's not construction in my way. And we'll get the autopilot back on as soon as we can. 
because I want to see it dealing with these curves. There we go. So it says the speed limit is 45 through here. I'm skeptical. This doesn't seem like a 45 mile per hour road, so I'm just going to run at 40 here. I don't see any posted speed limit signs. This whole area is being rebuilt. And then I have to, I guess I could have let it try to do that section. It's a pretty sharp turn, so I took over right there. Okay, so we had a little bit of a hiccup with the dash cam. Uh, it actually spontaneously rebooted in the middle of my recording. So we lost the front and the rear camera for about a three minute period of time while the camera was uh, going through its boot cycle. So now it's recording again. Uh, I've confirmed and we'll pick up where we left off. So uh, we really didn't miss anything too terribly exciting um, during that section. However, this is something I've noticed with the, the black view where um, I didn't notice it before, but I'm running the 1.0.04 firmware right now, and recently I have noticed that the camera does spontaneously reboot. The way that I find that out is because uh, it's got basically like a little audio welcome thing that it says when the camera first turns on. It's like black view for your safe driving or something like that, starting normal recording. And I'll just randomly hear that sometimes when I'm driving, which is an indication that the camera has unfortunately dropped out and has started up again. I would really like to get that fixed, even if it's only happening every once in a while, because I know with my luck, if I get into an accident, it's going to be in the middle of one of those boot cycles and it will not get recorded. So I'm going to have to look into that and see why that's happening. There is an automatic feature in the camera where it will shut itself off if it gets too hot. Um, this only should happen, though, if the car is sitting in the sun and the climate controls are not on, which obviously is not the case because I am in it and I do not want to melt. So, yeah, I've got the cabin set at 70 degrees. You know, overheating should not be an issue. I'm not sure what's going on, but we'll, we'll see what we can figure out on that. So I'm making a legal U-turn and getting back up to speed. And I'm going to go through these intersections, and my intention here is I'm only going to take over if absolutely necessary. Like, let's say, let's see what happens here. So it's slowing down because there was a truck in front of me, but now there are stopped cars. Ooh, nicely done. So that's something, obviously, that can be a concern for autopilot. Um, you have a car that's in front of you. The car might be going at speed. Car changes lane and all of a sudden the next car that's ahead of you is either going significantly slower than the car that was immediately in front of you or is at a complete stop. Um, obviously the car needs to very quickly, just as a human driver would, uh, figure out that now there is an obstacle which is visible in your path that wasn't previously visible that you may need to make a, a sudden correction for. So in this instance it did a good job. Now inter interestingly enough, it has also gone on to hold this is something I'm kind of curious about because I don't know what the consistent behavior is behind hold. Um, when it goes into this hold mode, basically what's going to happen is once the traffic starts going again, uh, the autopilot is, or the traffic work cruise control, I guess I should say, is not going to resume until I press the pedal, which I have done right there. Um, I'm not 100% clear on what the circumstances that cause that to happen are. Uh, sometimes it seems like it happens if you're sitting at a stop for a very long time, but in that instance it did it almost immediately. So I, this is a behavior that I would like to learn more about or find out exactly why it does this. Um, I'm not necessarily sure I see all that much value in it. Um, if the traffic becomes clear again, you know, I think it should go. I don't know what factors it's taking into consideration that it feels a human driver uh, interaction is necessary before it resumes driving. So, obviously since autopilot isn't capable of negotiating uh, traffic lights, it's, you know, we are able to stay in, auto, in autopilot because we are behind cars who are stopping at all of these stoplights, which actually happens on surface streets a lot. Like the only time you ever need to take over on a surface street, especially a straight one like this, is if you are approaching a stop sign, because obviously if everybody's taking their turns and actually stopping at the stop sign, you will be expected to come to a complete stop once you reach the stop sign yourself, even if the cars ahead of you are also stopping. Um, however, with red lights like these, uh, as long as how the autopilot is going to drive me doesn't result in me accidentally running the light. This works just fine. I can stay in autopilot the entire time and there's no reason for human inter intervention. I'm going to drop the tailing distance down to 2. We were previously set at 3. 
since we're going at relatively low speeds. That is something that I would like to see improved, though. Um, the ability, the tailing distance is still something that I, at least for me, and I'd be curious to hear if, if other people have, have different experiences. I adjust tailing speed based on the speed that I am driving at. All right, let's see how it does. Oh, nicely done. So the tailing speed does not seem to be something that adjusts itself that heavily based on the speed that you are driving at, which is something that I would sort of expect to see. Like, you know, if it's... I, I don't know what the number is. Like, I, I've heard that it's number of seconds until you reach the the next point, basically, so the, the rear end of the car that's directly in front of you. So if you're driving at 50 miles an hour and the car is, I don't know, like four or five car lengths ahead of you, then it takes three seconds to reach the point where the car was from, from when you started counting. I've tested this. It doesn't really seem like it's that. It seems like it's much shorter than that. Um, I've also heard that it's car lengths. Does not appear to be that either. So as far as I can tell, the one, two, three, four, five up to seven is uh, kind of arbitrary and I do make adjustments for whether or not I'm driving at highway speeds or whether or not I'm driving on surface streets at lower speeds. When I'm driving on surface streets at lower speeds I tend to use two maybe three when I'm driving on highway I tend to use three maybe four. It depends on other factors as well so let's see what happens when we drive through this section. Now something kind of funny is um, this section of road has actually just been built. So, oh, we got to take over. So autopilot doesn't actually, not, I'm sorry, not autopilot, uh, GPS doesn't actually know about it yet. And that was the, the section of the video that got cut off was actually the first time that I had literally driven on that road because they had just opened it. For the GPS did have inaccurate um, speed data on it, but for all I know, like they might have literally just put that speed limit sign up yesterday, so it's not terribly surprising. This guy's going kind of slow, so I'm going to go ahead and take advantage. Whoop. Gotta love that instant torque. It is great for getting through intersections quickly. All right, this is a great section to test on. So autopilot on. Whoa. Drop down to 30 because the speed limit is 25. No GPS data here. So that's something, what just happened there is actually something I'm very interested to see how full self-driving eventually resolves is, you know, we have speed limit data. We have the information that's coming from signs. We have the information that's coming from GPS data. We have things that the car can easily see because it has to do lane keeping, such as the curvature of the road. So if the road curves, obviously you can see that the lanes are curving. How is it going to deal with speed bumps? Is it going to be able to see speed bumps? Do they have to be painted? This is something I'm really curious about because I see this as potentially being an issue. Because right now, autopilot does not do anything about speed bumps. If you're hauling along at 40 miles an hour and you're about to hit a speed bump, you're probably going to get airborne off that sucker because autopilot's not going to acknowledge it at all. Um, and I'm very curious to see how full self-driving is going to deal with that. You can't be 100% reliant on GPS data because the environment changes and you know even if you're pretty good about making sure that you're updating your your hyper accurate maps that you're using for full self-driving there's always going to be that first time somebody encounters a new speed bump and you don't want somebody's car to get destroyed because they happened to be the ones who discovered that particular speed bump. Um, yeah I'm just I'm, I mean obviously optical computing and visual computing being what they are, I'm just not super confident in the car's ability to to recognize a speed bump at a distance and be able to slow down in time. That is something that that is a bit of a concern. All right, so I think this has been a pretty good test. These were some curvy sections. We got to try out a few different types of road. Uh, I think that's pretty much good for this video. Um, I'm going to try to post another video on this autopilot version of doing some mountain driving because um, that's obviously those are very challenging roads and also it's very pretty it's a very scenic type of video to make and I love doing mountain driving I just don't live quite as close to the mountains as I used to I used to live in Boulder but now I'm a little bit further out so I have to make a little bit of time for it but uh, yeah I think that's good for this video and thanks for watching